Now that we've looked at classification and regression trees, let's look at some expansions. In particular, let's look at the regression trees part of CART, and then we'll look at a few tree improvements. Classification trees can be converted into regression trees, meaning that they can also be used to predict a numerical Y, similar to linear regression. Many of the steps that we've seen earlier on are going to remain identical. Let's see what's actually different. First of all, when we look at the terminal nodes, instead of labels at the end of each node, which is a class label, we're going to use something such as the average of the numerical Y in that node. The other difference is that remember the impurity measures. We talked about the Gini index and about the entropy, which measure the homogeneity of a certain node, um, perhaps after a split or before a split. Here we're going to need something a little bit different because we don't have classes anymore. Instead, we have a numerical outcome. And you can think yourself of one very well-known measure of homogeneity of a set of numbers. For example, a standard deviation. When you use software, simply choose a classification tree or a regression tree based on the type of the output. In Excel Minor, the regression trees are going to live in the prediction menu, whereas the classification trees are in the classification menu. Just like classification trees, regression trees are non-parametric. In other words, we don't write out any mathematical formula. We don't make any heavy statistical assumptions. And they're good at finding some kind of a global structure or relationship between the x's and the y, as well as local relationships. So if you're thinking of using linear regression to solve some problem, and it's a predictive problem, you should also try out regression trees because it might find out all kinds of intricacies that you didn't think about. One example is interaction terms that you might have missed out in the linear regression model, but the tree will help you identify them. An interaction, for example, will show up when you have the same variable splitting multiple nodes. So you've expanded your toolkit to now include also regression trees when you have a numerical outcome. Let's summarize trees. Trees have some very nice features, but they also have some weaknesses. So what's nice about trees? As you've seen, they're very easy to explain, and you can easily interpret what the tree means. We can generate these logical rules that are easy to explain even to non-experts. They're also highly automated, like k-nearest neighbors and naive Bayes. Unlike regression, for instance, where you would have to specify the equation yourself. We've also seen that we can use this nice tree for variable selection by looking at the predictors that show up at the top of the tree. Trees can deal with all kinds of predictors, with categorical predictors, with continuous predictors, with combinations of them. So that's very nice and flexible. When we have outliers, they affect a tree much less than they would affect, for instance, a linear regression. And finally, we also talked about using a tree as an exploratory tool in terms of variable selection. What are the weaknesses? First of all, because this is a data-driven method, we're again going to require a lot of data in order to learn the patterns that are in the data. We're going to need extra data because we need this special validation set to help and prune back the tree. So even if we have a data set to start with, we're still going to have to take a portion out in order to prune the data. And of course, we always want to have an extra set to keep as a holdout set that the algorithm never saw. Now, when we get to computational issues, trees can actually become computationally expensive. And that's a problem that there have been some solutions to try and speed up the computational aspect. Finally, if you think about one of the first charts that we looked at, we had a scatter plot with two predictors on it and we use color to denote the classes. So in other words, we're creating rectangles by using a tree. Now, what if the separation between the two colors of dots doesn't really split up very well by using rectangles? In that case, a tree is not going to be a very strong classifier. So given these weaknesses, there have been multiple um, attempts to create some tree improvements. Let's look at a few. One very interesting problem that arises when you use a tree is that if you have a categorical predictor that has many, many categories, a classic example is postal code. 
or city if you're looking at a country that has many cities. What's going to happen there is, if you remember, the tree is going to search each predictor, and on each predictor, it's going to look at every possible partition. If we have a predictor with lots and lots of categories, that predictor is going to get a lot more attention from the tree. And therefore, it's more likely that that particular predictor will show up in the tree, even if that is not the best predictor. A solution to that has been suggested by some researchers who created a tree called Quest, quick, unbiased, efficient statistical tree. And the idea there is, again, first to address the computational issues with ordinary CART, but also to try and avoid this bias towards choosing categorical predictors with many categories. Quest uses statistical tests. Remember, we talked about Chade, which also uses statistical tests. Quest uses statistical tests to select predictors. But unlike Chade, which uses the same tests for selecting the predictors and selecting the split points, Quest has separate tests for both of them. And that's how it avoids the problem of selecting the predictors that have lots of categories. Another very useful extension is instead of looking at a single tree, we're going to generate multiple trees. And that's called a random forest. The idea there is to take our data set and create replications of this data set. There's a method called Bootstrap, which is basically sampling data from your data set with replacement. In other words, after you sample the record, you throw it back in and again take a random sample. And after creating these multiple replications of your data set that each have the same sample size that you have, we're going to fit a tree to each one of these replications. And then, in order to generate predictions, we'll allow the tree results, the different tree results, to vote. So if, if the majority of trees voted for a certain class, that will actually be the final prediction. Another way to create multiple trees and combine them to create a better tree is called boosted trees. And the approach here is a little bit different. It's an iterative approach where we're trying to learn from the mistakes of very simple earlier on trees. So we start with our training data and validation holdout, and we just build a simple tree. At the next step, we look at the mistakes that this tree made, and we focus on those especially in order to improve the next round. This is done by taking the original data and giving them weights based on how well that tree predicted them. The most difficult records where we had the biggest error are going to get the heaviest weights. And now we're going to fit a tree again that's going to try and focus on those problem areas. This is going to be repeated iteratively, where we keep focusing on the results of a, the previous tree that were most difficult to predict. Finally, we get a set of trees, and we use some kind of a weighted voting to generate new classifications. These are three examples of tree extensions that have led to better results in different applications. And again, I invite you to go and explore them in different places. One interesting resource is the website of Statsoft, who also um, has the software Statistica Miner. And they have a full textbook, an online textbook, that also includes some videos. In particular, they have some interesting information about what they call decision trees, but we call classification and regression trees. Please feel free to post any discussions or other interesting resources that you find on our forum.